Hi everyone, welcome to Python Osmosis, episode 8, the screencast where you can spend just a few minutes each day quickly and painlessly learning Python fundamentals. I'm Ryan Shea, and in this episode we'll be talking about break and continue statements and else clauses on loops. So the first thing we're going to do is create a for loop to calculate prime numbers. So we'll say for n, that's our iterator, in range, we're going to pull out that range function we just learned. Uh, we're going to start at 3 and let's go through to 20, actually not including 20, but uh, up to 20. And if you remember, a prime number is only divisible by 1 and itself. So we're going to create a second loop to see what numbers we can divide by uh, our iterator. For x in range 2 to n, but not including n, if n modulus x, and if, if you don't know already, the modulus operator basically gives you the remainder of a division operation. So if there is no remainder, then it was evenly divisible. So we're going to say if that modulus is equal to 0. So just to take a look at this, we're going to start looping through a list, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So when we go through with 3, we're then going to try and divide that by numbers starting at 2, going all the way up to the number that we're on. So when we're on 3, we're going to, we're going to see if 3 is divisible by 2. We're then going to see if, well, actually that's, that's it for 3, because our second range is only going to be the number 2, because that would be from 2 to 3, but not including 3. When we're on 4, we're going to try and divide 4 by 2. We're going to find out, yes, 4 is in fact divisible by 2, or in other words, the modulus of 4 divided by 2 is 0. And let's print what we found, what we found to be divisible. So print n equals x, the string star. And what this is going to do is it's going to print out a string like 4 equals 2 times 2. But as soon as we know that this isn't a prime number, it's got, it's got something that it can be divided by, we don't need to continue on checking every other number. We can go ahead and cancel the execution of this loop and continue on. So we're going to say break. Um, and what break will do is it will jump us back out of the, the most furthest enclosing loop. In this case, it's the second for loop. So we're going to jump right back up to the basically the top. Uh, and continue on with our, our for loop. Now one thing that's interesting in Python is that you can have an else clause on a for loop or a while loop and in this case what that means is if the if the loop continued through exhaustion in other words we didn't use break to unnaturally break out of the loop then the else clause will be executed. So that basically means once we've tested every single number and we know that there's nothing it can be divided by, then we're going to say print n is a prime number. Okay? So let's see. So going up to 19, we see all of these. 3 is a prime number. Oh, 4 is not. It equals 2 times 2. 5 is a prime number. 6 equals 2 times 3. And you get the idea. We've, we've created a really good, uh, really quick prime number calculator. Another statement that is often used is continue. Uh, continue is essentially puts you back out to the next iteration of a loop. So let me give you an example. Um, let's make a list foo equals, and we're going to make this list, uh, it's going to contain some strings, it's going to contain some integers. So 
we'll do one and then two and three, four, five, uh, false. So we're just going to put all of these different types of values in this list. Now what I'd like to do is loop through this this foo list uh, for item in foo if is instance um, item string. Let's say I only want to print the integers. So actually I need to do str. So if this is a string, I know that it's not what I want. I only want to print the integers. So I'm going to say continue. So continue is just going to jump right back to the beginning of that for not the beginning of that for loop, the next iterator on that for loop. It's not going to do check any other conditionals in this. But I might have other conditionals. Um, if is instance item, let's do bool. Is it a boolean? And if it's a boolean, I want you to continue. Um, float continue else at the very end print the item so what this did is there's these three different conditionals the check for a string the check for a boolean the check for a float but I only really wanted to print out the integers and when uh, notice I didn't specifically check for integers, but when I got to the bottom of that list, uh, I did end up just printing the integers and I used continue in order for, to short circuit this loop uh, at the earliest possible place. And that'll come in handy a lot of times. There's another little control statement that is similar and that is pass. Pass actually does nothing at all. Uh, and let me give you an example. while true this just sits there it does nothing it's just waiting for me to issue a keyboard interrupt and I do that with a control C and there's the keyboard interrupt what this is actually useful for is just creating placeholders when you're typing your code you may create a new class called uh, my empty class and that might be a reminder to you that you need to create that or fill it in or or go back and, and, and touch that later on but you wanna have something in there outside of a comment and you can just go ahead and do that and then there is an empty class and all it does is nothing that's all for now this screencast is directly inspired by the official python tutorial by Guido Van Rossum at python.org